Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Houston and I'd like to welcome you to this week's session of Drop-In Drawing, where we'll be looking together at an Assyrian relief panel dating back to 870 BC. I'm a visual artist. My work uh, addresses questions of climate change and how we relate to nature. And I brought my sketchbook with me to both of my trips to the North and the South Poles. I think of drawing as a very powerful and accessible way to connect with who we are, uh, where we are, and the times that we live in. Um, in this case, together, it's also a way to connect with something back in time. Today we'll be exploring contour drawing, and contour is really a way to look at the shape of an object, not only along its outside periphery, but also the inside contours of an object. Uh, we'll start with an exercise called blind contour, which is really fun for experienced and new practitioners alike. Um, it really joins the senses of sight and touch. After that, we'll explore different kinds of line qualities and mark making um, as we draw this Assyrian relief panel together. Before we get started with drawing, let's have a look at the object. I wanted to talk a little bit about this relief panel made of gypsum alabaster stone from the Northwest Palace at Nimrud, which is modern day Northern Iraq. I'm sharing some info about this object from the text on the Met's website, if you want to research it further. This beige colored panel is just shy of eight by six feet tall and four inches thick. It depicts a winged, eagle-headed supernatural figure looking to the left. The figure has a muscular body and is wearing a tunic. In his left hand, he's holding a bucket, and in his right hand, he's holding a cone whose exact nature is unclear. The figure is richly dressed with jewelry, including a collar whose front bead appears to be pomegranate shaped, a collar with pendant tassels, armlets, and bracelets with large central rosette symbols associated with divinity and with the goddess Ishtar in particular. The figure carries two knives tucked into a belt with their handles visible at chest level. A relief is a work where three-dimensional elements are raised from a flat surface. You could think of it as being somewhere between a drawing and a sculpture. This particular wall-mounted image was carved into stone. If we were to run our hands along its surface, we would be able to feel that parts of the image are protruding more than others. We can see this in the beak, the eyes, the left arm, and the muscles in the legs. We would also feel areas that have texture, like the wings on the back, the winged headdress, the hair, the bracelets, and the text running across and through the lower half of the image. The relief allows the interplay of light and shadow that emphasize the drawing, giving the work a variety of lines, some thicker and some thinner. In essence, light and shadow complete the image. For example, we can see the way the light hits the edge of the beak, the contour of the body on the left side, and within the feathered wings. This relief panel was originally painted, but today almost none of this pigment survives. The reliefs themselves retain incredible detail, including intricate incised designs on many of the figures' clothing. Protective figures of this kind are likely to have held multiple meanings and mythological connections. They are supernatural, but do not represent any of the great gods. Rather, they are part of the vast supernatural population that for ancient Mesopotamians animated every aspect of the world. They appear as either eagle-headed or human-headed and wear a horned crown to indicate divinity. It has been suggested that the figures in the palace reliefs represent wise sages from the distant past, which may indeed be one level of their symbolism. Figures such as these continued to be depicted in later Assyrian palaces, though less frequently. Only in the Northwest Palace do they form such a dominant feature of the relief program. Also unique to the Northwest Palace is the so-called standard inscription that ran across the middle of every relief, often cutting across the imagery. The inscription, carved in cuneiform script and written in the Assyrian dialect of the Akkadian language, lists the achievements of Ashurnasir Paul II, the builder of the palace. The inscription is thought to have had a magical function, contributing to the divine protection of the king and the palace. I have before me a blank piece of paper, 
a pencil, an eraser, a pencil sharpener, and an image of the relief panel on my computer off screen, which you can access at the Met Museum website. I'm going to show you an example of our first exercise together, blind contour drawing. In some ways, this is a misnomer because we are really going to be looking at our image very carefully, but we will not look at our paper and will not lift our pencil up from the page. So I'll get started. You can't see my face, but I'm not looking at my paper. I'm just looking at the image. I'm starting with the beak. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to start with the beak, and I kind of imagine that my pencil is touching what my eye sees. I'm following the beak up and around and down going around those kind of crazy kind of hair with lots of little details on the inside. And as you can see, I'm not lifting my pencil up. I'm moving in, up, around, back up to the eye, down to the mouth, the bottom of the beak, inside. I can change the pressure of my pencil I can press darker or harder for a darker mark, and I can press lighter for a lighter mark. I feel it on my edges of my paper, but I'm not really worried about that. Now I'm going on to my that kind of very elaborate wing. Okay, and I'm really kind, kind of trying to just find the right um, movement of my pencil that is right along following what my eye is seeing. So I'm up at the crown, the sort of feathers. I see little lines on the inside there. Back around the hair, over to the elbow. If you guys are looking at this, I can't, <laughs> I can't see my drawing because I'm not looking at it. But as you're looking at it, you might think, wow, that's a really crazy drawing. And if it looks really funny, that's good, because then I know that I'm not cheating. This is little knives. What's really nice about this relief is, as we were talking about earlier, is the way that the shadow and the light works on the image. So in the shadowed areas, I can use more pressure. And then in lighter areas, I can use a lighter a lighter mark. And you can see that I can move quite um, easily between, as we were discussing earlier, this idea of an outside contour and also the inside contour. So because this is a relief and part of it is raised, if I were to touch the inside aspects of this bird, I would feel all these little feathers and these inscriptions. And I'm trying to Follow that with my line quality, with my lines and my lines are really trying to connect with my sense of touch. Here's the foot. That heavy line down there. If you get a little bit lost, that happens and that's okay. Just kind of try to reconnect. The important thing is, is that you don't go too quick and that you really have a feeling that what your eye is looking at, your pencil is touching. I think that's kind of part of the secret of this whole thing. Okay, so that's how I started. It's funny, you know, if it looks kind of strange and a little bit out of proportion and, and awkward, and then that means I, I did the exercise. So as you can see, uh, I think I might have had an overlapping foot here. Got a little bit of, um, you know, my head moving forward. But what's especially nice about this is that sometimes we get line qualities that we wouldn't get actually necessarily otherwise when we're looking. There's something very special about bringing this element of touch um, and connection of touch together into the drawing. I'm going to do another one. This time I'm going to sharpen my pencil a little bit because I like to keep it sharp. And I'm going to do another one. It's I like the on the website you can actually zoom in. So 
going to zoom in on this image just right around the beak and start with that. Okay, so here I go. I can turn my paper, I can keep it vertical or turn it horizontal, that's up to you. Maybe I'll do that this time. So I'm going to start again, um, also blind, just like before, but I'm going to do a detail this time. Okay, this is kind of like a warming up exercise. So if you were an athlete, you might run laps. Um, for artists, this is just a really nice way to connect the eye, the hand, and um, I think the heart too, actually. Anyway, here I go around the beak, up into the feathers, the feather headdress, keeping that nice and light. Going off the peg and feel the edge of my paper. Okay, and I'm moving into the hair. And the hair has all these amazing kind of little curls and sort of shadows. Just trying to find a nice mark that stands for that. Because really the drawing is very much about the translation of what kind of mark can suggest something. So for this curly little hair and elaborate design, I'm making this kind of curly Q mark. Goes up and around. Okay, find myself again at the beak. Now here is a very dark shadowed line. Following underneath the neck and then these delicate little feathery thingies, little feathers following into the, the neck. So even with one um, area, you can really let yourself push harder and lift up, push harder and lift up to get a varied kind of line quality. And see, now I want to go back up into the eye. I can just kind of gently let my pencil go around without lifting it up still get into this big shadowed area of the eye and this kind of interesting eyebrow. What I love about drawing is, is that it makes us see things that we might not see otherwise. Like I never noticed this little ear before. This kind of details that careful looking allows us. Okay, so there we go. There's blind contour drawing number two. A little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit wild on my wiggly lines, and uh, but nice again to see just the freedom that this exercise gives us. So if it looks too good, I'll know you're cheating. Um, it's actually a really fun thing to do with other things too, not just. Um, you know, for example, really nice to work with this, but you can do it with just objects around your house or even, um, you know, somebody, people in your family or even um, on Zoom. <laughs> so you could try this exercise with other things too. Okay, so now what we're going to do is going to take another paper and I'm going to again draw the image. I'm going to draw the full image this time. So let me zoom out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let myself look. So I'm very much still looking at the image though, almost as look as much as I'm looking at the paper. So I'm going to start with my my beak. Kind of gently move around. So I, I'm, I'm looking at my paper, but I'm still really, really looking at my image. And that's what's nice about the blind contour is it gets us very, in a way, confident to trust that our hand can follow our, our eye. And bringing in that sense of touch so here's my one shoulder, here's my other shoulder, 
my hair is up here, so I can make adjustments. I, you know, I made the hair a little bit too long here. I'm not actually even going to worry about that right now. I can erase it if I want to, or I can just kind of come back to that. So the idea is, is that you can allow a fluidity into your approach that actually comes very much from doing that kind of exercise where you feel your way across the whole image, the hand, the arm, the shoulder is quite big. You can adjust a little bit here, the hair, the feathered headdress, the wing. Here's my shoulder, the wing comes down. At the beginning of a drawing, I often like to start kind of light, just to sort of find my way through it. And I don't want to get too fussy and erasing and thinking, oh, it's not good. I just kind of want to start gently and kind of fl with a fluidity to feel where things are, kind of gently place things in their spots. So looking at the kind of elaborate tunic that he's wearing. And here's the little hand, the bucket. The thumb. You'll notice that I don't, I'm not getting a lot of detail in immediately. I'm actually just starting off trying to get my main shapes and get them placed more or less uh, accurately. And something that's also important is to kind of look at where is something compared to something else. We call that cross-referencing in a drawing. So looking at this calf and how if I were to draw a line straight up, it's hitting this um, forearm. And if I were to go straight up from there, it's hitting the center of the beak. So I'm pretty good with where things are in relationship to other things. I could always make a little adjustment. Say, for example, my foot might be a bit too far forward or the front toe. Um, that actually looks pretty good next to my little bucket. But I could always, you know, erase this. Move it, readjust it. And let's bring this back a little bit here. So at this beginning part of the drawing, really taking the time to gently put things in their place. This is an interesting little knee thing here. Okay, here's the tunic and the back. I've made it a bit too long, so I'm just gonna adjust that. And here's my other foot coming up to more or less my shoulder. The back of the tunic is here. And I've got my toes and my so I've got my front toe, the foot comes up. Okay, one, this is here, one, two, three, four, five. I like to count them <laughs> to make sure they're all there. Okay, that's my heel and here's my tunic. Okay, and this is coming in, the back of the body, the waist is just around that, it's kind of, it's funny, I always think it looks like a watch, but it's actually like that rosette bracelet that he's wearing here. Okay, this is the hand. Here's the back. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that in terms of a general placement of things. Let me put the eye in here. Okay. Let me check a few other things. So for example, here's my bucket. The wing should be a bit below, kind of across around where the knee is. So that's pretty good. Okay, and I can give a little more um, of this arch here. And it comes right up into the back. Okay, this is here. And I'm looking at this top wing that comes up. Okay, okay, let's erase this.
I don't know what that was. Now I can kind of look at it and think, okay, is there anything, just overall, is there anything that I need to adjust? And I'm pretty happy with that. Thinking about, um, I'll hold it closer. So there I've just used contour to get the overall kind of mostly the outside shape and using a fluid line and a sense of um, kind of seeing the whole image, not getting too absorbed in one area of detail before moving on to the next area. Just kind of trying to really get a sense of the whole. Now I'm going to look a little bit more at some of the details. And also I would like to think about the line qualities in terms of darks and lights. So as we've discussed that this image has uh, shadows which emphasize the drawing and those are translated really nice into darker lines. So one of the, the main ways I can get darker lines is just by pressure. So I see that right in here, let me clean this up a little bit, right in here at the back of the shoulder is a very dark line and it kind of moves into the small of the back and I like to be able to also just bring that fluidity that we were just discussing in terms of the overall actually into my line um, application. So that's nice to think about the speed of something, kind of like taking a deep breath and just jumping into a pool of water. Like you just say, okay, here I go. I'm going to just bring it in and bring it out, get a nice fluid line. Here's the hand, the little fingers, the thumb. Now the top is catching the light, so it's not quite as dark, and I'm not going to use as much pressure there. I'm going to just kind of leave it sort of the way it was, although some of these inside details are definitely catching the shadow in a really nice way, and I can emphasize that. This maybe should be brought in a little bit. There's some nice little patterning here. Here are those Interesting little knives that we noticed earlier. Here's a nice dark shadow. Moving up into here. Something. Okay, I'm gonna re-look at the hand a little bit. Just reshape that. A little more upward. Their finger, that's that interesting kind of cone shaped. Here's the thumb kind of coming down. And I don't really know what this thing is. It's an interesting kind of cone shaped thing that he's holding. A little bit darker there, darker here. Oh, and there's another one of these rosettes. It's kind of interesting. You see it's turned towards us so that we can really make it out. Again, you know, you can zoom in. You can zoom in on the website if you really want to get into some of the details, which I do recommend that you do because it's, there's so much intricate uh, patterning. Okay, here now I'm looking at the beak. It's very dark here. It's kind of coming in. Interesting little information here and here. And then also the eye is extremely dark. At this point too, there might be some areas that you want to actually just add a little bit of shadow. So adding in from your contour and your line pressure, thinner or thicker, actually using just the side of your pencil and a soft pressure and just creating more of a shadowed area. I can show that closer up. So in that eye area, I'm making it a little bit darker with my line pressure and with some, some shadow. Okay, here we go along with this beautiful kind of hair and headdress in a way. And these kind of lovely little delicate lines and here I'm bringing in actually some of the things that I that I learned by uh, my blind contour. I liked that kind of curly experience of those little 
So some of these kind of intricate little curly lines that I was able to find through the contour experience, I can actually bring that right on into this, this roller, this drawing that's while I'm looking. What's fun about drawing is actually when we find a translation or a mark that kind of stands for something. That's really, I think, what uh, what's so magical about it. Okay, the feathers have a lot of shadow and a kind of a wiggly line along this edge, which, and there's sort of, let's see, I see about three sections here, so I'm gonna just kind of bring that in here to one. And then this other one. And then down here at the bottom. And then here we go. Kind of bring in some of this patterning as well. This is really also up to you in terms of how, you know, much you want to be faithful to what you're looking at, because you might also decide that um, this could be actually an inspiration for something that you would like to continue on your own, and you want to change some things, or you want to translate something in a different way. Or you might decide that you really want to spend, you know, a little bit more time and just really build up the details in looking at um, at the object here. It's really fun either way, I find, to use things from the collection, from the museum, um, in terms of just looking at them, themselves, and their beauty. And like we were talking about the mystery of them, the supernatural being, this idea of kind of traveling through time. And... Um, that is an amazing experience. And it also can be really fun to use something as a starting off point for something else. It might make you wanna invent your own mythical creature, or um, it might give you an inspiration for something that you hadn't thought about. So that's also a really nice way to use, use the drawing experience and use the works that we, that we find. Okay, so I'm going to end this here by pretty much just, I want to add in this, the darks here along this very muscular leg, calf. There's a lot of shadows down in this area. And right here in the tip of the toe, it's a nice shadow as well. Drawing is so interesting. It's like the more you look, the more you see. And that's something I think really special about the, the possibilities that it offers us. Okay. So, and there's all that kind of text that we were talking about earlier too. So you might decide how maybe there's a way that you wanna use a little bit of a marks carrying through the drawing to kind of indicate that, that texture. Just want to add a little bit of his tassel here, a necklace, that nice other little feathery thing here in the front. Okay. Finding some nice feathery marks. Okay. All right, so now I'm just looking at the overall image, and at this point, it's nice to kind of step back from it. You can hold it. Sometimes I like to take a work and hold it out far out in front of my face at arm's length distance, and you step back and you can have a look, and then ask yourself, hmm, how's that going? Should I add some more lights, some more darks? Um, is it, you know, does the darks following through overall leading us throughout the image? Are there some other details that I forgot? What else can I um, add to my image to finalize it? I think that um, for, for this, for today, I'm happy with that. I would um, really encourage you to actually 
you know, spend time with this image. It's very intricate and you could develop it further by continuing to add texture or you could also draw everyday objects around your house in the same kind of way. So today, first we looked only at the object without looking at our paper and we didn't lift up our pencil and we connected the senses of touch and sight by imagining our pencil touching what our eyes were seeing with these blind contours. After that, we looked at our paper but maintained a very close relationship between looking at our object and our drawing. This practice of blind contour is a wonderful way to keep drawing an active part of your life. Sometimes, especially when I'm in the museum, I think about the people who made so many of the works of art that we see there. And for example, this person who, the people who carved these drawings into stone. No electricity, no phones, just a carving tool and a stone. So when we draw, we continue to move that line through time. If you're on social media, please share your drawings at hashtag MetSketch so we can all see what you've done. Again, my name is Jessica Houston, and thank you so much for joining me today. See you next time.